This is me playing games with my mind after I developed a way to do this using only my thoughts. I like you. Okay, stop. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how. Like a lot of people, I love gaming. And since I have a background in psychology and using EEG for medical and research purposes, I thought it might be a cool experiment to try and combine the two. At the time, I didn't record or make notes on anything, so there'll be a lot of dramatic reenactments coming up. My original plan was to use EEG, which records the electrical signals your brain produces, to show what my brain was doing when getting jump scared in a horror, for example. Ah! Okay. or when I was super relaxed in a horror, for example. This was only possible because one day when I was just scrolling through the internet, I discovered that you could just buy a user-friendly EEG, which already was mind-blowing enough for me to get really excited about all the things I could do with this. But I wanted to take it a step further and see if I could use the data the EEG was getting to actually control the game. So my plan was to use this data in a program that would send a signal to press keys on my keyboard. But first, I needed to decide what data, what part of my brain activity would press each key. And I needed to teach it to detect and recognize this so I could actually control it. But I was lucky enough that a lot of this work had already been done for me. This EEG has a software that lets you record your brain activity when you're thinking about different things. This could not be more perfect. And it's such a better idea than me trying to program my own AI model like I was originally planning. So I started recording, attempt after attempt at trying to get it to recognize me thinking about dropping something or turning left or turning right or spinning or dangling from a string. If it does recognize it, this cube will move, but nothing. No matter what I tried, I couldn't get it to recognize my thoughts until... That's a good start. We have proof of concept. <laughs> With this confidence boost, I was now more committed than ever. And soon I was able to consistently lift the cube into the air by just imagining that. So the next thing to do was to code this so that every time I was able to push the cube, it would push a button to do something in game. I thought the easiest thing to do was a left click. And naturally when you think game, you think Minecraft. So it wasn't perfect, but I was more convinced than ever that I was onto something. The problem was that as I was imagining lifting the cube, my eyes would drift upwards and I'd lose focus. I just couldn't hold on to the image for long enough to mine an entire block. So back to the drawing board. I started thinking about what I actually wanted it to do. Just thinking about mining would take a lot of practice to get the same every single time. And I wanted a more universal visualization so that I could use it with different games. But what did mining have in common with hitting a tree, or casting a spell, or even shooting a gun? They all involved moving or pushing something forward. This worked amazingly. It was easy to maintain and I didn't get distracted as I wouldn't have to move my eyes. Like this, soon we had a mouse click that was easy to control. Most of the time. So naturally, it was time to take this live and use it to play Elden Ring. Yep, yeah, Elden Ring. Why not? I was so excited to show everyone this insanely cool project. I had spent three months of hard work, done long nights and early mornings, and blown through my entire cool project savings fund. I was just about to go live when... It's a ribbon cable, can we fix it? No. But I wasn't gonna give up. After a moment to grieve, I spent my entire food and shelter fund and ordered another EEG this time with insurance, and got back to work. Okay, we're ready. This was my second and final shot of making this work. If I blew it, I knew I couldn't afford to try it again. Somewhere to hide behind, baby. No! Spurred on, I instantly got started on getting another visualization and another button to work. But when I trained one command, the software would get confused and forget the other one. It couldn't hold on to both simultaneously. What my brain was doing was just too similar. So to make the visualizations different, I tried to make the second command as chaotic as possible. Imagining music playing and the cube spinning far so much it became more of a plate in my mind. And to my surprise, this actually worked. One thing that always bothered me about my mind control game controller was the fact that I was still using my hands and a literal controller. 
The reason for this was because there was no way to fluidly move a camera or character in a 3D space when I was just using yes, no thought recognition. So I thought if hands were the problem, why not try and use some other tech? This is an eye tracker. Using this, the computer knows where I'm looking at on the screen and also which direction my head is tilting. I used these two things to make virtual joysticks on an Xbox controller and created a nifty little visual to see where they were. It worked, but I, I did have to fix some sensitivity issues and counteract the dead zones created because of just the nature of using joysticks. Now the only thing left to do was combine them. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a hands-free, mind-controlled game controller. I don't know about you though, but I don't know many games where you can play them with only one or two buttons. Sure, you could probably get away with a Dark Souls boss or two if you never healed. Or you can play a shooter if you don't use grenades or melee or need to switch weapon ever or use any sort of menu. But that's not gaming. I needed more commands. But no matter what I did, what I tried, I just couldn't get any. It can't tell the difference between my thoughts. Even if I try to imagine something that I think is completely different to anything else that I trained before, it will still get all mushed together. I toyed around with the idea of using voice commands to fill in any more buttons I really needed. It does mean though that when we go into the <clears throat> menu, we don't have the ability to move this way. But this felt wrong. It wasn't mind control. Without more commands though, this would never be a game controller. And everything I had done felt all for nothing. More long nights and early mornings, desperate to come up with something and nothing. Along the journey, this was probably my lowest point. I just can't make my brain do what I want it to do. And usually it's the tech or usually it's the code, but this time it's just me, which somehow feels a lot worse. I still had my phone a friend. It was time to reach out. I'm about to hop on with Emotive, the maker of the EEG and software that I'm using, but it's all very NDA, so you gotta get out of here. <laughs> After a lot of cool stuff, the main thing that I took from our discussion was how much different senses can actually affect different parts of your brain. A visual idea is gonna awaken different areas than a smell, for example, and all of my commands had been visual. There was a whole world of possibilities that I was just ignoring. I also spent a lot of time with the team down at EarSwitch who are making an in-ear gaming input device, which got me thinking about how I could use my head in different ways. So I decided to wipe the whole slate clean and start training mental commands from scratch to see how good I could make this. Could it be a usable game controller? So here it was, the final plan. Eye tracking and gyro for virtual joysticks and four mental commands for virtual buttons. Pushing a cube, spinning a plate, imagining my fist clenching while angry and feeling hot and a little cricket hopping while I pulse muscles in my face. I also added a cute little drop down menu for each of these so I could make them press any button I wanted at any time. Add an option to toggle to spam or hold the buttons and some sensitivity sliders for the eye tracker and she was ready. It's ready to test. And if this doesn't work, then I think I'm genuinely out of ideas. I might have to actually accept that I just don't have the level of technology or knowledge on how to make this work right now, which would be soul crushing after an entire year and hundreds of hours of just training, let alone everything else. And I would have to break it to all of the really supportive people that have been following this journey and the people who are watching it unfold live. With a couple hundred onlookers, I started training. I managed to get a third input and then a fourth. But it's one thing to be able to move a cube on a white screen. Could I use this to actually game? Pick up this rock. I'm going to hit this rock. Right, I'm gonna jump. And I'm gonna try to throw a power sphere, but I don't have any. Mind control. And the final test.
So there it is. I made a hands-free game controller. This experience really taught me how sometimes we can be so caught up in our day-to-day -day lives that we don't actually appreciate how hard it is to really control our thoughts and our emotions and even our focus. The amount of appreciation that I gained for those who are unable to game conventionally and have probably struggled every single day to fit in was immense. Since this tech is becoming more and more advanced, I feel so lucky to have been right in the middle of its emergence and I can't wait for it to become more accessible and available. We take all this for granted, but our brains are amazing, and the things we can do with them are limitless. <laughs>